Chapter 30 Dawn in Russia The dawn will begin in Russia, I observed, when everyone will be better off financially, when the economy as a whole improves and individuals see a rise in their incomes. All the material things you see around you depend on man's spirit and conscious awareness, Anastasia's grandfather responded. Okay, maybe, but what's the point in erudite philosophies if, I can't, if people can't afford to feed or clothe themselves? They need to think about why that has been happening. Each one needs to figure out for themselves and stop trying to find a scapegoat. Only by changing themselves within will they change anything around them, including their financial situation. I agree with you that people will not be able to accept this all at once, but Anastasia said, after all, you have to do without moral preaching. You have to show people how, that's all. And she showed how. Now it's up to you to carry out what she outlined. Then, with the space of three years, many communities throughout Siberia, large, small, forgotten, and neglected, where there are only old people still living whose children don't even come for a visit, will become richer, many times richer. Their life will bloom abundantly and many children will return. And she will have much more than that to offer. She will reveal many secrets. She will restore people's abilities and the knowledge inherent in our pristine origins. Russia will be a most wealthy land, and she will do this to prove that the spirituality and knowledge inherent in our pristine origins are more significant than the futile efforts of technocracy. Russia will herald a new dawn over the whole earth. And what do I have to do to bring it about? You can start by revealing the first secret related to you by Anastasia. You should write in your book how to produce healing oil from the cedar nut, and don't hold anything back. I suddenly felt everything boiling up inside me. The wind was literally knocked out of me. I couldn't sit, and I jumped to my feet. Why? Tell me! Why should I suddenly turn around and do that for everybody for free? Any sane person would think I was an idiot. I set up an expedition, and I put into everything I put into it everything I had. Now my firm's been ruined. Anastasia asked me to write a book, and I wrote it. And now we're even. Your aspirations, your philosophy, that's not something I can readily comprehend. All I did was put it down on paper, as I promised Anastasia I would. But the oil, well, that's something that's completely clear to me. I now know how much I can get for it, and I'll never share the technology with anybody. I'll scrape together a little money from selling the books, and then I'll start producing it myself. I've got to put everything back together again. I've got to get my ship back, the company, too. I need to buy a laptop so I can keyboard the next book. I don't have a home anymore, no place to live. I want to buy a trailer home. And when I'm rich, I want to erect a monument to Russian officers, the ones physically alive but with mort mortally wounded hearts. Our indifference keeps tearing their hearts apart, and their honor and conscience have been spat on by people. The same people officers in all ages have gone into battle to defend. While you people sit nice and quiet there in the forest, here people are perishing. The country all around is full of various preachers. They all just talk about spiritual matters, but they don't really feel like doing anything. At least I'm going to do something, but here you're telling me I should give valuable know-how away just like that to everyone? Not on your life. Anastasia did determine a percentage for you too, Grandpa, Grandfather interjected. I know, 3% from the sale of the oil. Sure, what's a miserable 3% to me when I can get 300 for the oil? I know what the world prices are now, and as for its healing properties, what they're selling out there is considerably less effective. I did some checking. They don't know how to produce it properly. Now I'm the only one who knows how to do it. Everything she, che she, she said checked out. There's nothing in the world that can compare with its healing impact. Besides, scientific studies confirm it. Pallas said that it could even restore a person's youth. And do you want me to give it away just like that? You must take me for a fool. I've looked in through so much literature, even sent people into the archives to f confirm what she said, and they did. A lot of money went into that, too. You checked into everything, which means you couldn't bring yourself to trust Anastasia right off. That lack of trust is what cost you the time and money. Yes, I did do the checking. I had to, you see. But now I'm not going to be a sucker anymore. 
You talk about a dawn for everyone. Come on now, dawn? In that dawn of yours, I'd still be a sucker. I wrote a book. I did everything just the way she asked me to. I remember her telling me, don't hide anything, either the bad or the good. Humble your pride. Don't be afraid to look ridiculous. Don't be afraid to be misunderstood. I haven't hid anything. And what's come of it? The book makes me look like a complete idiot. People stand there and say that to my face. That I haven't got a spiritual ounce in my body. That there's a lot I still don't understand. They say I'm coarse and uncivilized. And even a 13-year-old girl from Kolomna wrote me to say I've been doing things the wrong way. And a woman from Perm came to see me right to my doorstep and said, I wanted to see what Anastasia saw in him. Don't hide anything, either the good or the bad. Humble your pride. Don't be afraid to look ridiculous. Don't be afraid to be misunderstood. She knew everything, didn't she? She comes out pretty good in the book. That's what people say. And how do I look? It's all her fault. If it weren't for the child, I could easily slap her one for what she did. Just think. I wrote everything down in good faith, just as she asked me to. And for that, people tell me I'm insensitive and a coward to boot. Of course, I'm a complete idiot. I've made myself into one. I obeyed her. I've written all that about myself, and now I'll never live it down the rest of my days. And after I'm gone, they'll still make fun of me. The book's got a life of its own, as it's turned out. It'll outlive me. And even if I stop printing it, what difference will it make? The underground press is already grinding out more copies. They're trying to run it off on photocopy machines. All at once, I stopped short and looked at the old man. A little tear could be seen slowly making its way down, its, down his cheek. I sat down beside him. He was still silently looking at the ground. Then he spoke. You see, Vladimir, my granddaughter, Nastinka, is capable of foreseeing a lot. It's not that she wanted anything for herself. She didn't want fame, didn't want money. By taking part of the fame upon herself, she put herself in danger, but she saved you. And the fact that you've come out the way you do in the book, well, that's her doing. You're right about that. But that was not to humiliate you. That's how she was able to save you, by taking upon herself a whole mass of dark forces, all by herself. And you respond to her with the pain of misunderstanding and irritation? think. Is it easy for a woman who creates out of love to hold on like that? What kind of, of a love is it, I countered, when her beloved is counted among fools? Calling somebody a fool doesn't make him one. A fool is one who mistakes flattering words for the truth. Think for a moment of how you would f like to be seen by others. As a feature, as a figure exalted above all, as a brilliant intellect, and you could have made yourself a reputation like that with your first book. But then, pride and selfishness would have destroyed you. There are not even that many enlightened people who could hold out against sins like those. Pride creates an unnatural image of, God, of man. It obscures the living soul. That is why the philosophers of the past and the geniuses of today can create so precious little. Because even after the first stroke of their pen, they are so overwhelmed by a sense of self-conceit they lose right off what was given to them in the beginning. But Nastenka was smart enough to set up a protective barrier against flattery and worship which led to pride, which lead to pride. They won't touch you now. She is saving you from a multitude of ills and is protecting both your spirit and your flesh. You will write nine books straight from your heart. The earth will be radiant with its space of love. And then, once you have dotted the final I in the ninth book, you will be able to understand who you are. Come on, isn't it possible to tell who I am right now? Who you are right now, that's pretty obvious. You are who you are at the moment. You are who you feel yourself to be. Whoever you will become, only Anastasia possibly knows. And she will wait, living each moment by love. The fact that people sitting in their comfortable apartments call you a coward, that's nothing. You should take it with a grain of salt and suggest they try heading off to the taiga for three days with no gear. Let them try sleeping with a bear in a cave. To get the full sensation, let them take a mentally deranged girl along. After all, wasn't that how Anastasia seemed to you at first? More or less. Let any man who accuses you try sleeping with his mentally deranged companion. 
out there in the backwoods where they can hear the wolves howling. Could he really do that? What do you think? The old fellow asked slyly. And no sooner had I pictured to myself the scenario he described than I burst out in a hearty laugh, and the two of us had a good laugh together. Then I asked him, Can Anastasia hear what we've been saying? She will learn about all your deeds. Then tell her not to worry. I shall explain to everyone how to extract healing oil from the cedar nuts. Fine, I'll tell her, the old man promised. But do you remember everything Anastasia told you about the process? Yes, I think I do. Right, tell it to me. Chapter 31. How to Produce Healing Cedar Oil It's not that difficult a task. The modern technology involved is already familiar and it needs no setting forth here. But there are some rather unusual nuances I should point out. When gathering the cones, one should not beat against the cedar with logs or wooden bats as the harvesters do today. This greatly weakens the healing properties of the oil. One should use only the cones which the cedar itself gives off. Either they fall with the wind, or you can knock them down with the resonance of your voice, as Anastasia does. They should be collected by people whose thoughts are free from evil. And it is especially good when the cones are picked up by children's hands. In any case, all the steps which follow should be carried out with kind and bright thoughts. Such people may be found in Siberian villages even now, Anastasia affirmed. Whether this really makes a difference is difficult to tell, but it also says in the Bible that King Solomon sought out people skilled in felling timber. Only it doesn't say how these people differed from anyone else in other respects. The nuts obtained after the shelling of the cones must have their oil extracted within a three-month period. After that, the quality will significantly deteriorate. The kernel should not come into contact with any metal during the extraction process. In any case, the oil should never come into contact with metal. The oil can be used to treat any disease without diagnosis. It can also be as used as a food product and added to salads. Or it can be taken one spoonful a day, preferably at sunrise, although the afternoon is also a good time. But definitely in daylight, not at night. That's the main thing. Only people may be offered a counterfeit, I voiced my concern to the old fellow, but he responded slyly and with just a touch of humor. Well, then, you and I will make a device to screen out counterfeits, and we'll work out those commissions of yours at the same time. How do we do that? Have to think about it. You, after all, are the entrepreneur. I was one, but right now I'm not sure who I am. Let's think together, then. You correct me if something's not right. Okay, I agreed. The final product should be tested with measuring instruments by competent technicians, doctors, scientists, in a word, professionals. That's right, they can issue certificates. But instruments can't catch everything. A taste test will also be needed. Possibly. Tasters determine the quality of wine, for example. There's no substitute for that. But the wine tasters are acutely aware of the taste of different vintages. They have a superb sense for both fragrance and taste. But who will be tasting the oil? You can check it. And just how am I supposed to do that? I've only tasted the usual sort of oil. When we made it ourselves, we didn't follow the technical procedures Anastasia recommended. Besides, I'm a smoker. For three days before checking the oil quality, you should abstain from smoking and alcohol. And don't eat meats or fats. And you shouldn't talk with anyone for those three days. Then you can check it and determine from the taste whether it is good or an imitation. And what do I compare it with? With this. Whereupon the old fellow put his hand into his canvas bag and drew out a small hollow stick approximately two fingers width. Another stick protruded from one end like a cork. This is genuine oil. Once you've tasted it, you won't mistake it for anything else. But first, let me rid you of what has built up in you from smoking and other quirky habits. How are you going to get rid of it? The way Anastasia did? Yes, more or less. But she said that only one who loves is capable of eliminating ailments in a loved one with the ray of love, and of warming his body so that even his feet start perspiring. With the ray of love, quite correct. But you cannot love me. Not the way she does, but I love my granddaughter. Let's try it. Go ahead. 
The oldster screwed up his eyes and began fixing an unblinking gaze on me. I could feel a sense of warmth flow through my body, but quite a bit weaker than what I had felt from Anastasia's gaze. Nothing happened, but he still kept trying, to the point where his arms were trembling. I could feel a little more warming in my body, but only a little. Still, the old fellow didn't give up, and I waited. And all at once, my feet broke out into a sweat, after which a feeling of freshness per permeated my head along with fragrances. I could feel the fragrances in the air. Ah, we've succeeded, he said, warily leaning against the back of the bench. Now give me your hand. He opened the stick cork, and from the hollow stick poured cedar oil into the palm of my hand. I licked it off with my tongue. The warmth spread across my palate and through my, t through my mouth, and I suddenly caught a whiff of the cedar. And it was, indeed, hard to mistake for anything else. Think you'll remember it now? asked Anastasia's grandfather. I'll remember. What's so hard about that? I ate potatoes once at the monastery. I remembered that for ages. Twenty-seven years later, I still remembered the taste. Only how will people know that it has been checked? That is, that it is genuine cedar, not oil. Right now, it's too expensive on the market. For just one gram of the raw oil diluted with something, they charge 30,000 rubles. I saw it myself. It's packaged as an import. With prices like that, it's all too tempting to sell fakes. You're right. Money is the master of ceremonies at the moment. We'll have to th think of something. You see? A dead end. Anastasia said that this money can be turned to a good purpose, the grandfather observed. Let's think of something along that line. They've been trying to work out for some time now, for example, how to guarantee the quality of vodka against imitations, but they've changed the labels and corks. They've come up with excise, excise labels, but to no avail. There were imitations on the market before, and there still are. What with photocopiers and all, any label can be easily copied. What about money, Vladimir? Can it be copied too? Money, that's more difficult to fake. So, that's more difficult to fake. So, let's stick money on the back side of our bottles, like labels, so that these sniveling bits of paper can actually do some good for once. What do you mean, stick money on the bottles? What kind of nonsense is that? Give me a banknote, please. Any banknote. I gave him 1,000 rubles notes. Well, then, it's quite clear. You take the note and cut it in half. Stick one half on the box or something else. The other half you hide away in a file. You'll think of a suitable place. Or put it in a safety deposit box at your bank. You see, on each half of the note there are identical numbers, and so anyone wanting to confirm the authenticity of the oil can simply verify the number. Well, Gramps, I thought to myself, you've got a good head on your shoulders. <laughs> and out loud I said, there's no better defense against imitations. Way to go. He laughed. Still laughing, he added. So, give me a percentage, too. Come on, cough it up. A percentage? What kind of a percentage? How much do you want? I want everything to be just right, said the old fellow, all at once serious again. Then he added, besides the three percent, take an additional one percent, in kind, as oil already packaged, and offer it for free to whoever you feel you should. Let that be a gift to people from you and me. Right, I'll do it. You've really thought of everything to a T. Way to go. To a T? That means Nastinka will be very happy for us, and my father still thinks I'm lazy. So you think I've done a good job? Of course you have, and we both had another good laugh, and I added, Tell Anastasia I say you would make an excellent entrepreneur. You mean it? Certainly. You could become one of those new Russians, and a great one, too. I'll tell her. And the fact that you're telling everyone about the cedar nut oil, I'll pass that along, too. No regrets? What is there to regret? It would be a tiresome process anyway. I'll dash off the third book, as I promised, and then I'll get going with my business again. Trade or something else. Something normal.